Welcome to another episode of Little Talks, your weekly dose of marketing news and insights from Littlefield Agency. So I'm going I'm to clue everybody in. I won't, go into, I won't go into the details. We just played the ultimate prank on Steve Roop. How long did it last for? It was like a 30 minute prank. Uh, 45 minutes almost. For, 45 minutes. He was in a dark place. Again, I won't go to the details, but he has a new lease on life. You're so happy. It's so nice to see you back at your, and, and I, by the way, I was like, hey, why are you in such a bad mood? He goes, ever since you guys, we just got back from Ditchwich. He goes, ever since you guys got back, <laughs> I'm in a bad mood. But it's all good. We played a hell of a prank though. I'm still going to the speakeasy after this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, before we, we got a few shout outs. Um, Walk us through just a quick overview. How was Las Vegas? Welcome back, my friend. Thank you. And yeah. how much money did you win? Uh, negative dollars won. Okay. You want to uh, give us a number? No, I don't, because I think Gary listens to this podcast <laughs> sometimes. But, um, you know, you can't put a price on fun, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time. Spoken like a true man who just got back from Vegas. Had a good time. Good, good, good. Wonderful, just... Good yeah, to get out of the re- office. Relaxing. And, you know, prior to that, we had the Easter weekend. My birthday was that weekend. Then there was Easter. Um, then that whole week off, two, two, three days in Vegas. Came back, had another nice weekend this weekend. Saw you guys at happy hour on Friday. It was nice. It was a good um, happy hour. Yeah, I had a really Some nice 10 days off. And then you got back from Perry today and just tanked and just it. threw you through the ringer. <laughs> what is a major change in this space since you've been back, since you left us? Oh, wow. What hasn't changed? We have shelves up. We have the little talk sign up. And lit, which I didn't expect. Yeah, it's. Can you pretty, tell us lit on the camera? Can you tell us lit? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Uh-huh. I love it. So yeah, it, every, everything looks incredible. We've got uh, this. This these will change out over the weeks. We might add some great funny pictures. We yeah. might add some, uh, but we've got some great just if notorious you're, if you're, items. If you're not watching, try to watch, and if you are watching, try to pay attention to the shelves behind us because we're gonna try to mix it up behind there every so often. Yeah, we've got... Um, Especially if your name's Chelsea Clement, you should probably pay attention to the shelves behind us. That's exactly right. There's one thing that I want to point out. Uh, over here, we're going to call this our client wall. I've got Grasshopper right here. Yeah, perfect, right behind me. And then we got Ditch Witch up top. You're going to see this Milwaukee stud <laughs> tape measure, and that is a shout-out to John Mosh, one of our OG listeners. Like, yeah. I'm not kidding you. When we first came out with the podcast, we had five listeners, and John was one of them. Um, after a podcast, you want to tell the story? No, you tell me. We, we, were, we were talking about, you know, just like us, you know, doing this, et cetera. And uh, we were talking about a manufacturer. And John literally next day aired a Milwaukee stud with a handwritten note saying that Roop and I are a couple of studs <laughs> and that this is going to be a good podcast. And here we are. That was 100 episodes ago. That was a long time ago. Long anyway, time ago. John, we love you. It's like a dad to me. I love that guy. So very, very cool. But And then we got some other little field, you know, our ad age, best places to work on the other side by Roop. Yeah. Some swag, and then some things will be changed. And uh, John put a topic request in we're going to try to get to, right? Yes, John. Uh, and by the way, for those listening, if you have topic requests, you can actually um, submit podcast topics on our podcast landing page. Yeah, if you go to the web, com, find your way through the POVs to the podcast page, and click into any podcast at the bottom there's a form where you can submit uh, topics. And if there's something we like to talk about, we'll talk about so it. So John submitted a topic. Um, and we have a few topics slated over the next couple of weeks, but we will get to you. So John, thank you. And for future listeners and current listeners, thank you for any topics that you're submitting. Yep. Um, we had a wonderful day in Perry. Today is the solar eclipse day. Um, we actually pulled over with uh, the Ditchwish team, got to see uh, the partial eclipse. And then 25 minutes later on the freeway, we pulled over and got to see the full eclipse. Very cool. Um, there's some stories here. Chelsea Clement did not wear her glasses. <laughs> that's on our that's on our social uh, pages right now. You can get a glimpse of that. Claudia, it's on there. Yeah, yeah. Check out our Instagram stories. Wouldn't recommend that. She's no. also been a little <laughs> little off since. Were, 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 were you disappointed it didn't get darker? Yeah. Uh, sure. Yeah, Claudia is. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought it was kind of cool because it was very stormy. Yeah, and it got a little cooler. The weather cooler. got cooler. But like the the path of totality goes through. Well, I think through Arkansas, and I was told we're just yeah we're we're ninety four percent totality, which is still pretty dark. I yeah. thought this but, shows you how damn bright that sun is. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, I was, I was a little let down. We'll try again in twenty years. I, <laughs> I would say twenty years. Mm-hmm. You'll still be here. It'll be my third or fourth eclipse. Yeah, per. <laughs> Um, Hey, a couple of client announcements before we get into a really fun topic today. Um, We kicked off H.E. Williams last week in Carthage, Missouri. Awesome third family, third generation family owned business, a wonderful team, a lot of opportunity. And uh, they were very, very hospitable and just a great time. So H.E. Williams, thank you for that 
wonderful introduction face to face and uh, many great days ahead. Uh, we cannot name the name of a client, but we have a new client. I got the verbal agreement from her on Friday. She's amazing. I am very excited. You're very excited. Mm. Um, that'll be a slow rollout in the sense of us announcing that, but we will at one point. Um, but to that client, if you are listening today, we can't wait. <laughs> and um, and then last but certainly not least, there's actually a, a new client that, uh, not a new client, a prospective client. We're in an RFP for uh, Susan, Tammy, and Kim. I haven't talked to them in a while and um, really cool brand, a big rebrand opportunity, which is those are few and far between these days. And so hope to have the opportunity to work with you. We will send you this podcast, um, but always, always down for a good rebrand because those, I can't tell you the last time it's been a while. Yeah. Creative likes that. Okay. So Roop put together a really cool um, topic that is always relevant. And obviously we always talk about digital marketing trends. And sometimes we try to help you just in the sense of you're working with your team, um, working with your leadership teams, everything in the B2B world. And so today we're going to talk about a favorite topic here at the agency, which would be a day in the life of those in the Enneagram. Yeah. So um, a few months ago, we did one that was kind of about like get, putting together a keynote or a, a PowerPoint presentation. You guys seem to like that. So we thought, well, what else could we do every so often that's not always complaining about uh, Twitter or X or uh, trying to talk. You haven't, been, you haven't complained as much lately. I think I think you're getting better. I'm being better. Yeah. yeah. We'll get some in there. Um, but like, what, what could we do that's that's different and mixes it up? And um, so we thought for this week's topic, we would do something that's helped us a great deal here at the agency. Tremendously. And, and believe me, no one was more skeptical than me when this came through. Um, it's called the Enneagram. And, um, you know, the, the topic title today is the Enneagram and the value of knowing your coworkers. But beyond your coworkers, we find this is also really good insight into customers. Absolutely. Uh, family members. <laughs> uh, all kinds of stuff. So um, anyhow, uh, let's, you want to talk about the Enneagram? Yeah. So um, Reynolds was in here earlier. Reynolds Wallace has been with us for almost 13 years. And she's the biggest proponent of the Enneagram. She looked at this. She's like, oh, my gosh, like this is the best topic ever. Um, so the Enneagram, there's nine total numbers, okay? So from one to nine. Full rainbow. Full rainbow. We as humans possess a quality of each number, but mm -hmm. you are number dominant. Yeah. Your number. I'm an eight, an which is the challenger. The challenger, which sounds sketchy. It's not, a, it's not sketchy. It's the best one. Oh, That's really? That's not how you're supposed because to Because <laughs> I'm a seven. <laughs> With an eight. And a seven with a, give a... Give me an exclamation point after that. Claudius is seven. Seven's we are the enthusiasts. Enthusiasts, yeah. They find they, they, they love a good time and yep. joy and run from things that are not a good time or joy. We promise to always bring the energy to you. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing, right? That's a, that's a dominant thing. There's pluses, there's minuses. We're all, you know, no one's perfect. And I think the rule is that everyone lives at, at different points of their day or month or year uh, in, in stress points in different numbers. You're never really consistently in one, you bounce around, you have a home, yeah, right? So, so like your home one is... It's is a great way to put it. You have wings. Wings, So yep. you're, you are dominantly an eight, which is a challenger with a... a seven wing. Seven wing, yeah, the enthusiast. Seven. So I am a seven, the enthusiast, with a six wing, which is your loyalist. Brandon is a loyalist. So, you know, the Enneagram is about personality types, things that make you tick, why, ways you like to communicate, things that upset you, all those sorts of things. And... When this came up, I was really kind of like, this is dumb, touchy-feely stuff. I thought it was the biggest bunch of BS when we yeah. had to do an offsite about this. You can say bull****, they'll, 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 <laughs> they'll, they'll put a thing on it later. Yeah, hey, I'm trying to be a nice guy. They'll, okay. edit, they'll censor it. It's coming from the challenger. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But, yeah. um, but I think the most important thing is, is, I remember walking away that day. That was eight years ago. It's like, ah, there is something here. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, there's, we have a few key takeaways as we talk through this today. The biggest thing that I, so I've been here at the agency for eight years, I've been in a leadership position for four. When we are off as an agency, whether it's with clients, whether it's internally, it comes down to communication. Mm -hmm. It truly does. Yep. And, and knowing how to communicate with different types is, is everything. It, Bingo. It, not even just communicating, but understanding the way they're communicating to you and how you're receiving it. So, um, Let's just, I, I just real quick want to read through the, the types. Is that yeah. okay real quick? Yeah, okay. Read, read through, not not the... Uh, not the full deal yeah. here, but like, uh, we'll start with one and go all the way up to nine. So one is the reformer. Uh, their essence quality is goodness. Okay. Uh, two is the helper. Their essence quality is love. 
And let me give you an example. One is Chelsea Clement and Mike Rocco. A couple examples of the helper are Reynolds Wallace, Scott Peavy, um, Jason Jordan's a two. Yep. Who else is a two? My wife is a two. Carrie Roots yep. a two. Okay, number three. Three is the achiever, and their uh, essence quality is glory. So they're they're after uh, attaboys and pats on the back, and, and that's kind of what motivates them uh, at their at their best point. The achiever slash perfectionist, or yep. they're going to do things to the best of their ability. I don't. Do we have a three at the moment? I don't know if we do. Taylor said she. Oh, Taylor Armstrong. Yeah, Taylor true. is a three. That's exactly right. Sarah wrote these all down for yeah, us. Yeah, we should I didn't probably should reference that. Um, number four is the individualist, and their uh, essence quality is depth. So they're, that's the kind of person that really likes spreadsheets and yep. numbers and, and can really get lost in, in no, data. I think that's the investigator, dude. Oh, is that the yeah. actual? Four to the individualist is very is artsy, creative. creative. Oh, artsy, you're right, you're right, you're yeah, right. Yeah, uh, Courtney Counts Courtney is a Counts four. Is one. Uh, Natasha, yep. Five's the investigator. That's the person who's after clarity and go. wisdom. So, yeah. Data. Brock Campbell. Yeah. Brock, Brock is the investigator. Jake Bentz. Chris Kaiser? Chris Kaiser. Yeah, I think so. so. I think so. Six is the loyalist um, and their essence quality security. They're loyalists, usually we kind of talk about this one a lot because we have a lot of sixes here. Loyalists need a lot of buy-in to make a decision, but they're the ones that also keep everyone else from jumping off the cliff. David right. Littlefield, Katie Kite, Brandon Bergen are is examples Julie, of sixes. Julie, six. Ju yeah. Julie Swab is yeah. a six. Eight is the challenger. Hold on, hold on. Oh, I yeah. skipped one. Good yes. Lord, come on. <laughs> the enthusiast got mad. Um, <laughs> seven is the enthusiast. <laughs> and we have a few in this room. Their essence quality is joy and freedom. Woo! They like a good right, time. Right, baby. Like a good time. It's a good time. Uh, Thank you, Brandon. There it is. The, uh, awesome. Number eight is the challenger. Their essence quality is strength. Um, and that's that's me. They're also usually skeptical of a lot of things and kind of uh, need a lot of proof to move forward, which was true for me for this exact Enneagram project. And number nine. Number nine is the peacemaker. They're all about peace. They just want everyone to get along and have harmony and be happy. And we have several peacemakers. Courtney here Roberts, well. Zach Bateman, Julie yeah. Evans. We've we've got a lot of peaceful people and uh, harmonious people here at the agency. Yeah. So the, we've we've not just kind of read through this. We've had uh, a woman comes here. We had a couple different had a women. Couple different here. women. Yeah, Hillary, Hillary Atkinson last yep. year did a phenomenal uh, she, former employee that just is fully bought into the Enneagram, and we had her uh, come to the agency and facilitate a, a two day session. Yeah, and so in those sessions, you kind of go through exercises of of uh, you spend time on each one of these, and you, you get to understand a little deeper. Um, the pluses and minuses or the hero, victim, or villain roles within each one and how you react to it and how others would react to it. And there's little, little games and stuff you play, but it, it's pretty pretty useful. Like you really do get, I mean, a lot of times you're like, I don't want to go to this thing. It seems like dumb and all that. Totally good. Loved it. There's a couple of different, so we do the Enneagram. We've heavily adopted that here at the agency. A lot of you are probably familiar with Myers-Briggs. I'm an yep. ENFJ. I, I have know. no idea. You have no idea that you haven't taken the test. As an eight, I probably won't. Um, Reynolds just went to a conference and they did another kind of iteration of it. So there's a lot of different opportunities for you. And it's, it really comes down to what, why are we talking about this You know, to you as our clients and prospective clients today? <clears throat> it comes down to self-awareness. And you and your marketing department, right? Like you're working with a few team members. You might be working with 10 team members. You're working with leadership groups. You're working with uh, salesmen and women. Mm -hmm. You're working with engineers. Everyone ticks differently. Mm -hmm. So what would you say, Roop, just in um, understanding coworkers, clients? I mean, we, we do this ex exercise. Everyone at Ditchwitch knows their Enneagram number. And it's important for us to understand that on the client side. Um, Lightwell Insurance, when they were here, they were, uh, yeah, they brought they, that up. They brought that up. He's Adams the seven. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you use it in your daily interactions and what would you give our listeners just any tips and tricks? Um, well, first off, if you're, if you're interested in it and don't have a budget for it, I believe on the website, you can take a mini version of the test and for still free. Get, yeah, for free and totally. still get your number. You can sign up for these like daily emails that kind of tell you some some no just updates and news and notes on like your enneagram type, so you kind of are in tune with others like you, um, and go do that. That's it's pretty neat. I think there's a bunch of books about this. Sarah, oh, has, Sarah we should have had Sarah on today. She, Sarah and Reynolds probably should have hosted this. That's, that's a fact. Um, but yeah, it, it it is pretty useful, and I, I would say um, you know in those moments when I'm getting frustrated with a situation, I do pause and try to think about okay from this person's perspective. They don't mean for it to sound this way. This is part of how they think. This is how they're wired. So I, as an eight, I live in a very gray area of decision making. Ones are very black and white. Things are right or things are wrong. And so for a long time, and not just like in a moral kind of way, but like just anything. 
So um, over time, I've started to realize when I'm having friction with a one, it's not necessarily just because they want to fight. <laughs> it, it's just their perspective on it. Well, then and you really have to kind of adapt yourself to, to, um, to kind of mediate that in a way. So ones, ones will straight up call you out, right? Because they see black and white. Mm -hmm. um, Chelsea Clement and Mike Rocco are ones. Yeah. If you ever see the, the two of them getting in, into some sort of tense, uh, and I say tense, it's good tension, yeah. but they'll butt heads from time to time. Oh boy, watch out. Yeah. They but, will come at each other. But then it's all over and they walk away. But then away it's all over, they walk away and they're like, oh my God, are you okay? They're like, yeah, we're great. We're that Enneagram type does not carry that They don't care. On. Now, if Rocco behaved that way to Reynolds as a two, Reynolds, the last thing she wants in her life is conflict. Right. Like th that, that, that is her absolute worst case scenario. And so Rocco, when he has a conversation with Chelsea, handles it a lot differently than mm -hmm. he would with Reynolds. And it's because we, we've... It's been years that we've been working I, I, I on this. I think this has become second nature to us at this point. And like even kind of asking, like how, I, I had to think about it because I'm like, I just react now. I just know. I think everyone knows. Um, but it, it is useful. It's very helpful. It's a great team-building exercise. Uh, you can do it on the cheap. You can do it on the expensive side. Yeah, <laughs> and, no, for and, sure. And, and you definitely get your money's worth, I'd say, on that uh, in-person sessions. The, the team-building point is a great one. And the reason being is um, – Oh my gosh, there, there might be something said about Rube. I'm like, that makes a lot of sense. That's just how mm -hmm. he's wired. That's, that's in his nature. Uh, there's sometimes, uh, cause Rube and I meet regularly. Uh, let's say I have to have a hard conversation with Rube. I will read through your Enneagram. How do I best deliver that information? Luckily that doesn't happen very often, right. but it, Hey Rube, I think we really need to focus on this and let's have that conversation. If I handled it a certain way, he might feel completely blindsided. Mm -hmm you then recoil and go into a, what we call a down level of your number. And then I can see the bad side, you know what <laughs> I mean? But like side, yeah, yeah. The, the villain the victim, side, but yeah. it's just, it does, it blows my mind. I think the, the biggest thing, like I said earlier, is it comes down to communication. And so as you're working with your marketing team, as you're working with um, you as a marketing leader, might be absolutely working with the leadership, uh, leadership team of your organization, and understanding what makes people tick and how they communicate is very simple, um, but God, it's so valuable. It, yeah, I, I would say it has uh, a lot, it's opened us up to have a lot more um, conflict resolution situations that don't linger, which yes. is great. And you know, I, I, I would like to think this is one of the reasons we got that uh, Ad Age Award, right, on best places to work, because we all like each other and we all understand each other in a way that I don't think we maybe did or Generations oh, of Littlefield did before this. Oh, no doubt um, about it. Yeah, and I can't read it enough. I was certain this was the dumbest thing ever. Um, and actually, I te went on the test, I qualified or came in pretty even for almost every number. And uh, the woman doing it at the time, watching me over the course of a day, came to me at the end of the day and she said, well, you're definitely an eight. And I was like, well, why would this whole thing? I don't even believe She goes, that's what an eight would say. <laughs> and so, like, she, she kind of, I was like, She's oh, got okay, it holy down. crap, it got it. So, um Anyhow, it's it's been great. I, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, I can't think of an organization too big or too small uh, to implement this, or or at least investigate it. Right. Well, in the in the B two B world, think about you as marketers and uh, your left brain, and think about the mm -hmm. engineers you're working with. You're their right brain, right? How are you communicating information? You've got this great uh, marketing campaign. Take it to the head engineer, and they go, "Well, you're not talking enough about horsepower." Okay, well, let, let's let's have that conversation. There's, the, ah, it just comes down to the communication. It really does. It just blows my mind. Yeah, yeah. It's it it, it, it was one of the biggest uh, adjustments I'd say in the agency in the so last twenty years. <laughs> in in this uh, in this write up today, we will include a link to the Enneagram. Yep. Um, because it is even the free tool, and it takes what Rube five to seven minutes to take the quick test. Claudia, you took you took the yeah, free you just, one, didn't you? Did you take the free one? No. No, you did the real one. How long did the real I one take you? I think it took me like 30 minutes. Okay, for the real one. Real so free one, one's yeah. probably 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, it's interesting and just learning the ins and outs. If you want to talk to us about it, we've like Rupe said, we've been doing this for well before my time. I've been here eight years, um, but it's great. It's a great tool in your pocket. We're approaching the summertime, which is a weird thing to say, but it's if you have a, if you have a little downtime, and even if you don't, it's worth understanding how your team communicates and uh, and what gets your team motivated. It's so much better than a trust fall. <laughs> so if you're doing those kinds of things, eh, try this instead. Yeah, no, it's great. So um, just kind of some uh, a fun thought, a little change of pace here. I like this group. I think it's, it's a good reminder. And here's the thing. We've been doing this for eight years, and every time we do it, I always take away something. Yeah. It's just, a, just little simple things that um, tools in your tool belt for as you continue moving forward with your team. 
All righty. That's it. That's all. That's all we got today. That is it. Next uh, next week, we're back at it. Roop and I have our quarterly offsite tomorrow. I go and see a little thing called the Masters later this week, so I'm pretty pumped. And uh, we wish you a wonderful rest of your week. And we can't wait to uh, be back at it and see you next week. Yeah, let us know what your Enneagram numbers are. Yeah, we'd love to. Please do. We'll see you guys. And that's a wrap. We hope you've enjoyed our little chat and found ways to grow your own marketing strategies. Remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and follow us on social media at Littlefield Agency.